I had a subscriber ask two questions. The first was, how large of a part can I make? And the second one is, how much detail can I get? Both of these questions were regarding my Traven uh, injection molding machine. Hi, my name is John. Welcome to another episode. <laughs> Let's start with the question of how large of a part can you make. My Traven is limited to mold size of about 4 inches wide by about 3 inches tall. Okay, so that's one limitation. There's another limitation, which is clamping force. You have to be able to hold the two mold halves together. If you don't hold the two mold halves together, the plastic can start to squish out the sides and then you get a bad shot. So, I didn't really know a rule of thumb until I visited Morgan Industries. When I visited them, they gave me a very simple rule of thumb, which is that you need about one and a half to two tons of clamping force for every square inch of part that you want to make. So let's take a look at what this means. Here's an example of a part that I made on my Traven. This part, if we measure it, as you can see, is two and a half inches in diameter. That means it has a, an area of 7.85 inches. Now, if we take a look at the 4.5 tons of clamping force that I have available on the Traven, that maps into uh, using the rule of thumb of uh, 1.5 to 2 tons of clamping force per square inch gives us a range of 2.25 to 3 square inches that we can make on this machine. So how, do you ask, was I able to make a part this large on the machine? Let me uh, bring in the mold and I'll show you the trick. Here you can see the entire mold. This is uh, one half and this is the other half. And I set up this mold so I can actually make two different parts from the mold. You can see there are two different places where I can fill. Now, this particular part fits over here like this. And you can see that um, the cavity is entirely on this side of the part. This is flat. Now, what that means is that I don't actually need perfect alignment between the two mold halves. So I don't have any alignment pins. So if this is off a little bit, it just means that the runner itself uh, will not be exactly uh, circular. That's all it means. So what I do to be able to make a part this size is use screws. So every time I want to make a part, I have to put these screws in to all four of these slots and then screw this together. Now I use a drill for this with a, uh, a hex tip on it so that I can do it fairly quickly. Getting these apart requires that I use a wrench to break it loose. Um, I saw a trick recently that I'm going to have to try, which is to use a pneumatic wrench to uh, break the force. Uh, anyway, that's the trick and that allows me to make much larger parts than I would be able to make otherwise. The downside of this approach is of course it takes longer to make each part because you have to put this together and take it apart again. I'll show you that later in this video so you can see what it's actually like. The other question that I was asked, and let me zoom in for this, see how close I can get, is the question was, you know, how detailed can the parts be? And if you look here, there are some details here. These are rivets. I'm trying to get really, really close, that are about 30 thousandths of an inch in diameter. And this is a dome shape. So you can see that you're able to get uh, really high quality parts. And actually, you can see that one of the rivets is actually slightly off, which means uh, that's the way it is in the mold. Got this all set up. And then I'll go ahead and uh, try it out. And I don't know if you can see, but a little bit of uh, smoke came out of there. And so the smoke coming out tells me that uh, it's starting to fill the mold. Now for the first one, I haven't put in this, I just put in one screw. And you can see it's a, a partial fill. Now what I'm going to do, is get out my electric drill. And I'll make this a little bit faster. Okay, so 
first thing I want to do is put all four screws in because that will give me uh, the maximum uh, climbing force. Uh oh, too much torque. Okay, so this way I have a predictable torque on it because what I've done is I've set the, uh, the torque setting on here. It doesn't really matter which one, just that it be consistent. Okay, now I can put it back in here and I'm going to increase the, uh, the air pressure. So now I've got it about 95 PSI and I'll uh, shoot it again. And you can see quite a bit of smoke came out. It's a good thing I'll let it sit there for a little while so that uh, the uh, plastic solidifies and then I can uh, pull it out and what I like to do is just you know, swipe the molten plastic so I get a clean uh, break like that. And then just release the pressure because now there's more pressure on the screws since uh, it's trying to push the uh, mold halves apart. And then I can take the uh, screwdriver, I mean the uh, electric uh, drill and I need a new battery and there you have it a successful part so just pull it out and you can see it's perfect part